Hi everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Dan Pardo, and this is Pardo's Turn, my weekly Wednesday web series where I analyze a classic show tune from a music director's point of view, and with the help of a special guest, perhaps shed some light on what makes the gems of our musical theater canon so great. Today I am really honored to welcome on the great Bill Nolte, a multi-talented veteran of both character roles and operatic leads. He was most recently seen in Waitress, with other Broadway credits including La Cache au Folle, Amour, Jane Eyre, 1776, Cats, The Secret Garden, and The Producers, which he performed on Broadway, regionally, and on tour. But rather than choosing from one of those Broadway titles, or featuring a major role that he played regionally like Tevia, Don Quixote, or Tony from The Most Happy Fella, we settled on something different that I'm really excited about. One of his signature specialty numbers that he has been performing for over 20 years, but has never put on film. Specialty numbers are original comic showstoppers that break the fourth wall, speaking directly to the audience or perhaps to a show's creative team within an audition setting. The music is either original, written as a broad pastiche of musicals or maybe a certain performer, or a straight-up parody of a well-known tune with new lyrics. Other variations of the specialty number take a serious song as written, but put it in a clever new context, like an insomniac singing The Impossible Dream, or they utilize an arranger to drastically change the musical style of a familiar piece, or perhaps mash it up with something else. Last week in an audition, I heard someone sing Love Shack over the accompaniment of Britney Spears' Toxic. Bill's specialty number employs a parody lyric to a well-known musical theater song, originally from a show that he was an integral part of, but I won't give it away just yet. In the old days, these specialty numbers were confined to off-Broadway venues or New York's seedier cabaret spaces. I mean, the popular Forbidden Broadway series were considered forbidden for a reason. That brand of comedy was considered too lowbrow for the Broadway. But after the success of shows like You're in Town, Spamalot, and Something Rotten, can someone write a 20th century musical comedy now without making some self-referential joke about the industry? It really forced specialty numbers into the mainstream, but rather than put the song that goes like this or snuff the girl under the microscope, let's see a master at work with the material that really started this revolution. His own. Hey, Bill. Hey. Thanks. Hey, hey, neighbor, I should say. Hey, that was so funny. I was walking down the street the other day, and I'm like, that guy looks like Bill Nolte. And I'm like, that guy is Bill Nolte. <laughs> and he's like, where are you headed? I'm like, oh, uh, oh can I say our address? Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm heading to such and such a building. <laughs> and it was my building. And it was his building. And he's two um, floors under me. You were already on my short list. I think I actually already reached out to you. You had to, talked to me, yeah. You know, to, to bring you on, and this was... Uh, Serendipity, I guess. It was. And then, you know, seven year, years ago we met at Goodspeed, mm -hmm. uh, at doing Most Happy Fellow. Which was such a, a beautiful show and a beautiful piece and an unbelievably touching performance. And the funny thing is that, you know, when I asked you, I mean, I didn't necessarily want to, you know, pigeonhole you into uh, doing, you know, a Tony thing, but, you know, you've done some really great classic roles. Uh, My La Mancha, you've done uh, Tevia, you've done Bialystok, you've, you know, on Broadway and the top regional stages uh, across the country. And yet, when we were going through your book, the thing that excited you the most uh, was kind of sharing this specialty piece. So, from your cabaret From act. your cabaret act. So obviously this is, uh, this is something that's quite special and personal to you. And from what I understand that, you know, these are some lyrics that are heavily guarded, that to the extent that they're not even written down so the accompanist can't sn uh, sneak well, a picture. that's true, that's true. I've had people run out the, uh, of the, roof, the audition room asking mm -hmm. for the lyrics, and I said, no, thank you, I'm not going to do it. It's my song. Mm -hmm. Mark Waldrop and I uh, wrote them. This was about maybe 20 years ago for my nightclub act called Billsville. And uh, I've also written a, a move medley with Jimmy Walton. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is the one that uh, other baritones have called me from London wanting the lyrics, and I haven't shared it. And, mm -hmm. You know, I want to share it with you. Well, I mean, I'm just 
really touched and honored and, and, and grateful. Casey Nicola used to just, you know, love these lyrics and are you going to sing the song, are you going to sing the song? And, mm -hmm. and it got to be kind of like, well, hire me and I'll sing the song. Right, right. And um, so it got to be sort of a joke that way too. So mm -hmm. I put it away for, you know, five, six years and then every once in a while I'll take it out just because I love singing it and I love people uh, knowing about Mark, his, mm -hmm. his brilliant work. and and. Um, yeah, cabaret has been a very important part of my life. I've done about five different cabaret shows. Mm -hmm. One of the things that really uh, struck me uh, listening to this song, listening to your lyrics, is how prophetic uh, they were. You know, almost verbatim, the, the jokes that you've kind of written in, you know, so long ago have been taken. And I mean, there there is uh, the song that goes like this is basically, you know, uh, it's this, true. You know, it's true. And this was twenty years ago, mm -hmm. and we just I had the idea to do this. Um, piece and uh, Mark jumped on board and then we kind of worked together on the uh, lyrics and uh, it kind of came together and then I started doing it for auditions and mm -hmm. it was like oh my god I never thought I could do this for an audition and it, it worked you know are there any like big jobs that you booked uh, through the song that you remember off the top of your head oh yeah oh yeah La Caja Fall mm -hmm. and um, Let's see, uh, I think even producers I did. Mel Brooks and Sue Stroman got a big kick out of it <laughs> and, uh, and kind of noticed me from that. So, yeah. you know, writing your own lyrics to things and parody lyrics can pay off. This is my moment. This is my bit. My chance to get right in your face and sing legit. But I'm no hack now, I'm holding back now. We just began the tune, don't wanna peek too soon. This is my moment. 1223 I'm in here switching while the others get to pee but it's not filler this song is a killer just hold on to your throats here come the money no
material is uh, This is the Moment uh, from Jekyll and Hyde, and you have a history with that piece as well. Yes, I was in the American premiere down at the uh, Alley Theater in Houston, mm -hmm. and then we did it up at the Fifth Avenue and down at Tut's, right before the Broadway production came in. I did Simon Stride in that, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm on the complete version with Anthony Warlow. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, and, like uh, the, the concept album that uh, yeah. everyone was listening to prior to the... Well, that was a concept album with Colm Wilkinson and Linda, but then oh, the right. concept album sort of in between right. it there's, all there's, was them with Anthony Warlock. I lose track of I Frank know. Wildhorn uh, cast recordings. One of the interesting things about you as a performer is that uh, you know you have big range, You're not vocal range, but uh, you know, dramatic range, and uh, your background as a singer was in opera. Is that, is that right? That's right. I went to the Cincinnati Conservatory of Music, and um, I went down and auditioned in musical theater and opera and was accepted in both, and, but they said they would, you know, give me a scholarship if I came in opera, because mm -hmm. I guess they needed opera singers or something. So I went and I did sort of half and half. I did uh, half musicals and half operas. I did uh, The Lion and Wizard of Oz mm -hmm. and Ben Franklin and Albert Herring and Albert and Don Basilio in Major Figaro with Kathy Battle. So it was a great training period and I came to the city and kind of thought I would try to do both and really got nowhere fast in either so I got out of the business for three years and I was a textile designer. Mostly watercolors, is that right? Yeah, watercolor is really the only medium that, that interests me. Mm -hmm. But for three years I was a textile designer but I continued to study. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't let go of my dream, yeah. you know. And uh, no, I Actually, I wish I had uh, for Happy Fella and I don't know if you do this for a lot of your shows, but he made the most spectacular patches um, that uh, I, I came across it when I was moving all the stuff to the apartment, so I know it's around here somewhere. Thanks. Um, I've got a whole code of all my patches of all my uh, travels. It's mm -hmm. I've been everywhere. It's part of my travel medley. Now, uh, you've played a lot of roles that are kind of international, uh, I should say. You know, Tony, obviously, an Italian. Uh, fiddler, Eastern European, 1776. You played McKean with, I assume, with a thick uh, Scottish yes, brogue. Yes, yes. I, uh, I, I like, I like really, really changing my looks and my, you know, cadence and everything. That's one of the things that I love about acting mm -hmm. and, and musical theater. Tevye is a role that I adored and I loved researching it. And I've done it three times, and each time I get deeper and deeper into it and. And uh, I just finished doing Oliver out at the Pioneer, mm -hmm. doing Fagin. I never thought I would get to do Fagin, but Karen Eisenberg is a doll, and mm -hmm. she said, yeah, do it. And I did it and had a great time, you know, creating this old Jew, mm -hmm. you know, from all the Dickens research that I did. I really had him in my mind, what he looked like. And I remember when you were out there doing it, you made some really amazing uh, you know, fine artwork, uh, including a rendering of your interpretation of Fagin. Um, I'm just about ready to start painting again. I've been on a hiatus. Mm -hmm. and that's been frustrating. Do you have like seasons that you like to, to paint more in? Do you because you do do you do mostly landscapes? Or do you... uh, everything. Mm -hmm. I painted for four years down at the Leslie Lohman Gallery. It was mm -hmm. uh, live models. And there's a lot of those on there, and they're rather explicit. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, I like plein air. I like mm -hmm. modern uh, watercolor. I like to see watercolor explode and yeah. and dry brush and wet brush and hard edges and soft edges and and uh, that's what appeals to me about watercolor. One of the things that's not watercolor but that is explicit is your uh, old horny Joe's pies, which <laughs> uh, you were doing uh, waitress uh, yes, on I Broadway and on tour, right? I did Waitress last year at this time. Mm -hmm. uh, I joined the tour for five weeks, came home for two, and then I went to the Broadway company, did it mm -hmm. with Catherine McPhee, Catherine mm -hmm. McPhee. I did it for like six months all in all last year, and then uh, Al Roker replaced me. And uh, Not many people can say that uh, Al Roker... <laughs> I'm such an Al Roker type. Mm -hmm. and, um, <laughs> But I had a great time, and it's a, a wonderful role. And while I was there, every night I had a big chunk of time, and so I would do a sketch of one of the pies that was mentioned in the show, and they're on the, on the, on the scenery in the diner. There's some yeah. pies, and you know, they mention them in songs, and I wrote them all down, and every time I'd have a new illustration on my door of my dressing room. Mm -hmm. And then we got to Broadway, Broadway Cares, Equity Fights, AIDS, the flea market time, and I thought... Sure. I'm going to approach Tom Viola, who was a friend of mine from college, we moved to New York together, if I could maybe make a poster of all, all of them and mm -hmm. sell them for Broadway Cares, I could fight AIDS. And we did, and they were a big hit. Yeah. And, um, yeah. 
Well, this was just such an honor to, for you to share these personal lyrics and some of your stories. Uh, it was great working with you up at good speed. And, you know, the fact that you're just two floors away is... I know, it's you know. perfect. Well, thank you. And, <laughs> Thanks, Bill. And uh, my pleasure. If you like this episode, give us a big thumbs up, uh, comment, share, like. And uh, where can we find your work, Bill? Do you have a website or do you... Yeah, BillNolte.com. Easy. And, and you can go to media to listen to things. You can go to gallery to see photographs, mm -hmm. uh, my paintings, bio, you know, everything. It's awesome. all there. <laughs> all right. Until next time. Thanks so much. It's still not over. Hear that keychain.